Okay, so my talk is called Elements of Dance Music. Um, we're going to chat on how to make people dance with music. Is that another appropriate title? So, yeah, we're going to make music using only maths. No, not a lot of sound samples, no nothing. Just like pure mathematics. And it might even work. We'll see how it goes. So, I'm Paul. Uh, I work at Mozilla on the Web Audio API implementation. I also do the spec work at the W3C. Uh, so we end up like we write this massive, 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 massive document that ends up telling you how exactly the Web Audio API should work. And um, and when I'm not working, I actually just make music with like normal people, not with math and software and everything like that. So yeah, all right. Without further ado, let's talk about what we have for today. So we'll do a brief introduction and try to define and characterize what is music. Um, yeah, it's a big task, so it's going to be scoped pretty narrowly. And then we'll chat a bit of a, about a specific genre of music. It's called acid techno, a um, genre I like very much. And maybe do a little bit of a deconstruction of an acid techno track. So. Uh, yeah, listen to a couple of tunes, we'll see how it goes, maybe understand the parts of it. And then we will um, learn on how to, like, how Web Audio actually works and try to bend it to make it do an actual techno track, like to make sound, to make the drums, to make the synthesizers, and to make the, yeah, the sound we want. And then we might even try to do it live in a text editor and just like, you know, write a quick dirty techno track, like, and then five, write some more text, and six, it might work. Seven, if we have a good tune, yeah, just get up and dance, right? All right, first, what is music? So it's a simplistic, a simple definition. It's not by any means like the one definition uh, the ac academicians use. Um, to me, and for today, uh, music is rhythm plus melody plus timbre, right? So rhythm uh, can be characterized as the absence of presence of a sound at some point in time and the duration of its sound. So for example, we have a note each beat for a quarter beat, and we're going to have 140 beat per minute, right? Melody is a succession of a sound that have a height, a pitch, and they constitute like a unity, right? So it's a, it's a tune you can sing and you remember, that's, that's a melody. And what is more important to me and for us today is a timbre. So it's the interesting sonic quality of a sound. So for example, is it like a pure tone? Is it pitched? Like can you, can you determine the height? Uh, is it a metallic sound? Is it like bowed, like a violin? Is it like a vocal, like someone is speaking or singing? So yeah, today we're going to focus on, on timbre and like actually making sound that sound nice. And uh, yeah, the code is already written to make it sound where it, like when it should uh, happen. And, uh, and the, the notes are already put in, so yeah. But yeah, timbre is what is important for us today. OK, so now we're going to talk maybe about a genre of music it's called acid techno. It's going to be our focus for today. So the sound design that we're going to do might sound like that. All right. So, so yeah, electronic music, as you as you can hear. Um, Got created in Chicago and Detroit in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, so yeah. So in this uh, in this specific track that I made quickly the other day, uh, you can hear two machines. So a Roland TB303, which is a bass synthesizer, uh, which is like the little tone, uh, very harsh, uh, very fast. 
And there is like a Roland TR-808, which is a drum machine. So it's got a kick drum, clap, uh, hi-hats. So if we listen to it again, OK. So in here, we've got a kick drum, right? And then we have a maraca sound. And then we have some claps. Right, if we mix the drum together, OK, cool. Then we've got a bass line. In here, it changes after some point. OK. And then if we mix everything and add some delay and reverb, like some effects, OK. So that's the kind of the goal for today. So why are we doing it at Seed Techno in the first place? Uh, it sounds good, right? <laughs> that's one thing. It's also very simple to code, so I can explain you where were the concepts uh, with that. So the, the kick, the clap, and the rackass we're gonna we're gonna synthesize um, are, are actually gonna be TR808 simulation. That's why I was presenting this machine, and the baseline is gonna be a TB303-like sound. Okay. So, without further ado, let's introduce the audio context. And now, from now on, it's going to be all JavaScript and uh, some codes on the slide. So please pay attention. It's going to be worthwhile. OK, so you've got this thing, var ac equals new audio context. And really, when you talk about WebAudio API, there are three main concepts. You've got an audio context, you've got audio nodes, and you've got audio params, right? So You've got a number of audio nodes, uh, like you have seen this picture, and you connect them together using the connect call. So if you connect an oscillator node to a gain node, uh, it will apply the processing of the gain node from the oscillator node. And then if you connect something to the, to the destination node, then you will actually hear it in your speakers, which is what we need, right? So what can you do with an audio context? You, can, you have the destination. You connect things to the destination. Uh, you have the current time, so it's the time of the audio context. Uh, it's go always going forward. You cannot really pause it. Uh, it g cannot go backwards, so it's always progressing. Then you can create some audio nodes. So for example, an audio buffer source node uh, can play an audio buffer. Uh, a gain node can change the volume of its input. An oscillator node can play a simple waveform, like a sine wave, a square wave, and things like that. And a bi-quad filter node can filter the sound and alter its characteristics, for example, removing the high frequencies or the low frequencies or something like that. We will see more examples in, in a second. Uh, what can you do when you get an oscillator node? So an oscillator node can be connected to another node. You, you can also disconnect it from the other nodes. You can set the frequency, that is the height of the, the sound. You can slightly detune it to make it more interesting. You can change its type, for example, whether it's a sine wave, a square wave, a sawtooth, but we will see that in a second. You can start it at some specific time, and then also stop it at a specific time. Audio param, um, uh, as you can see, the frequency here and the detune are both audio params, right? So what can you do with an audio param? You can set the value here. You can set the value at a specific time, so you say, uh, set value at time 4, 10. At exactly 10 seconds, the value will jump to 4. You can do an exponential ramp to value at time, so it, it will do a smooth ramp from the current value to the next value uh, using an exponential curve. You can do the same with a linear ramp. And you can do a set target at time that will uh, gradually become, uh, goes to value uh, from the time time and with a, oops, with a constant uh, which is, I'll explain it later with the more examples. So it goes like that when you do an audio param. So for example, here we do set value at time, uh, 1.0 at 1.0 seconds, it jumps. And then we do a linear ramp to value at time to 2 seconds uh, at 0. It goes down gradually like that. And then we set value at time again. And then we do a set target at time, and it decreases exponentially like that. OK, so now. We will actually hear some sound. OK, so we do an oscillator. We create a gain node. We set it to a sine wave, and we set it to an A4, which is 44 hertz. 
And then you, we will see two inputs. So we will change the frequency and we will change the gain. Then we connect everything together and we start. So we can change the frequency. And we can change the gain. Right, so it's just a sine wave. Okay, now we can change and use different type of uh, wave. That's a square. And that's a triangle. And now we have a sawtooth. So it, it's different sounds, pretty useful. All right. Now, what can we do? Like, it's pretty static, not very interesting. So we can, we can change things using the audio program methods. So for example, if we take a very low sine wave at 100 hertz, and then we set value at time at 1.0, which is no volume reduction, and we set target at time uh, at 0 to 0, which is silent, it will do something like that. Right? You can start to hear the start of a kick drum, maybe. Oh, one sec. Maybe we can do a bit more. So if you change the pitch at the same time, maybe... Yeah, starts getting like a kick drum. Okay, we'll see you later. Um, now we need a bass sound, right? So what can we do? We get like two oscillators, maybe, two sawtooths, set it to the same frequency. Uh, we're going to same have two sliders to be able to change the value of the detune and, and the, the, the value of the frequency. And then we connect everything together like the usual. OK, so. That sounds better, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, some techniques we can we can learn. Okay. Okay, we need a bit more. Okay, now need to introduce a bit like a bit of a heavy beast like the Fourier transform, your old friend. So you can you can look at the sound in the time domain where you see a sine wave like looks like a sine wave. You all know. We can also you see it in the frequency domain where. In the x-axis, you've got the frequency, and in the y-axis, you've got the actual amplitude. And then if we change the frequency, whoop. So yeah, and if you change the set, if you change it to a square, you've got a number of different patterns here. All right, so this is just the thing we will use in the next slide. So now what we can do is to filter the bass, the bass, right? So for that, we use a biquad filter. And uh, we'll get a sawtooth, and we'll detune it like previously, and then set a pretty low frequency value, and then we will get a low pass. So what the low pass is, it, it lets through the bass sound, and it cuts the high frequencies, and then we will change various characteristics of the bikewad. So the frequency, which is, is it cutting the high uh, frequency at a very high sound or a very low sound? Uh, the Q, uh, you will see in a second. So what can we do with that? Okay, so we have a, a bass, right? And the red line is the filter, right? change the characteristic of that. So the Q is this little notch at the, at the left. So it's called the resonant filter. Of course you can go and get high pass, which is exactly the opposite, right? It cuts the low, and like the high frequencies, like the treble, stays here, right? And then you've got various other stuff, like a, like a band pass that lets through a near specific frequency. 
But yeah, we won't use it for now. Okay. So now, what can we do? Like, we go on and on and on. We create a buffer, um, and then we fill it with random noise, mat.random, so it's noise between minus one and one, okay? What can that do? Oh, let me just drop the volume. Just noise. It's gonna be very useful to do our maracas sound. Just like, yeah, just random noise, really. Okay. And then, yeah, for the clap, I didn't really feel like synthesizing a clap because it's pretty hard. So I'm using other facilities of the Web Audio API. So I'm fetching with a new fetch API, which is the new XHR, um, uh, an org file, because like, that's the one, one time I'm, I'm cheating and I'm, I've actually sampled the machine. And uh, sorry, it recorded the sound. And uh, you can use decode audio data to decode the buffer. Uh, it takes the same codex as the HTML media element. And then it gives you a decoded buffer, and you can just play it back. Right? So you just play it back like that. You get a buffer, set the buffer. You set it to loop, so it loops indefinitely. Connect to the destination and start it. So just, just playing back the clap. Yeah. So without further ado, let's try to make a little something. So. Okay. So this is just uh, whoop. Okay. It's just a text editor. Um, whoop. I'm gonna just setting this up. Okay, cool. And then what I need is my actual other Firefox, so I can run the code. Okay, so this uh, this Vim thing is running in which Firefox? I've got so many open. Yeah, in this one. Yeah. So yeah, uh, let me just explain to you what the code code is here is doing. I didn't feel like, as I said previously, we are focusing on actually making the instruments. So. The notes here have actually always been written. Uh, so we just have a tempo, which is 135 beats per minute, which is normal for techno. And then we have a kick, as we heard previously, that goes on each beat. So one, silence, 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 one, silence, silence, silence. And that goes forever and ever. The hi-hat goes on the opposite. So that's going to be kick, hi-hat, kick, hi-hat. The clap goes in the middle sometime here. And then we've got uh, some no notes for the bass. So that's MIDI notation, if you know what that is. But like, just, just notes, really. Then uh, what we are doing, yeah, we get uh, S for synth. Uh, we get an audio context here. We set the track. So the track is what we have just here. Uh, we get the destination here. We get a clap sample, because I didn't feel like synthesizing a clap again. Uh, then we get a noise buffer, because we're going to need a, a noise buffer. Then a couple utility function. Uh, all the code is going to be online uh, as well, with a lot of explanation, like textual explanation. So the clock uh, lets us know what time it is in the track. Uh, we count not in seconds, but in beats. That's easier if you want to do audiovisual synchronization. Uh, yeah. So we start the, the, the track. And then we have a little scheduler here. So the scheduler is continuously looping in the track and telling you which note you need to play and when you need to play it and which, and, uh, which instrument has to play it. So this is not a very complicated nor important topic for today, so let's just close it. Right, so we have four empty slots here. We want a kick drum, whoops, we want a kick drum, we want hi-hats, we want a clap, and we want a bass, right? At the bottom is just the initialization with a fetch and uh, a new audio context and everything, so it's not very important. OK. Let's start trying to make a, a kick drum, right? So it says boom, boom, boom in the comment. That's exactly what's going to happen, right? So we're going to get a first oscillator, OK? So we do create oscillator. 
And then what can we do with, a, with an oscillator? We can set the type to a sine wave. Um, we, can, uh, we also need a gain node, because we will need an envelope. So the kick is uh, louder at the beginning and quieter by the end. So let's get, let's get us a gain node. OK. Create gain. OK. Then, of course, we need to connect the oscillator to the gain node and the gain node to the actual destination, right? We need to start the oscillator. In each function, we get the time t here. Uh, so it's the time of uh, which we need to start the node. And then we also need to stop it at some point. One second is good. It's going to be shorter than one second, but we need to stop it at some point. It doesn't really matter. And then we need to decide uh, like which curve we, we will uh, get to for our kick drum. So um, let's start with a gain. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to start at a full volume, set value at time. So full volume is 1.0. And it will at t, it's at full volume, so beginning of the kick drum. And then it will gradually fall, target at time, to 0, at time t as well. And uh, the constant is how fast it will go down. So 0 0.1 is pretty fast, but not too fast. That's, I guess it's good. Then, as we saw earlier, we need to set the, f we need to drop the frequency a notch. Frequency, OK, set value at time. So a kick drum, 120 hertz is good. Uh, I mean, I'm just doing those values on the top of my head, really. Like, I've kind of listened to 808 kick sound, and it sounded good. So, I, yeah, it was all right. And then it, it also drops to around 50, uh, a bit shorter. OK. So, yeah, maybe we can try to hear. Do we hear something? Ah, OK. That's pretty, not bad. Maybe we can make it a bit. Yeah, that's better. So let's stop that. OK. Um, we, we, can, we can really make the, uh, the kick drum a bit better if we do like a bit more an, of an attack sound. So I'm just typing this real quick. What we want is a, is a sound of the beater on the, on the kick drum, right? So it's going to be full of high frequencies. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. So hmm, just like doing something real quick here. Um, uh, a second sound is exactly the same calls. Uh, very much shorter, though. Um, what can we do? What do we need? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we need to connect everything together. Oscillator 2 with gain 2. Oops, gain 2. OK. Does that sound better? No, it doesn't. What have I forgotten? Uh, oh, yeah. So that's a bit of a better kick, right? OK. All right, that's good. We've got a kick, but we've got a number of more instruments to go, right? So let's start with some hi-hats. Um, so for the hi-hats, uh, it kind of sound like a, a noise burst, but we need to remove the low frequency content because we, it doesn't have really a, a bass sound, a hi-hat, not really. So let's see. We need to play back a noise buffer. So for that, we use the audio buffer source node uh, thing. Source, OK. And then we set its buffer to uh, a noise buffer. So a noise buffer is, where is noise buffer? Yeah. So a noise buffer is just a buffer that contains random values between minus 1 and 1. So yeah, it's just playing that back. It's not very complicated or anything. And uh, then, of course, we always need a gain node. Because percussions have like a 
different amplitude during the, of the, over the course of the sound. Create gain. Okay. Um, and then we will need a high pass filter, HPF. Create by quad filter. Okay. And we will set it to high pass. So the high pass, as it as its name uh, suggests, it lets through the high frequency, let them pass, but it cuts, it cuts the low frequency, right? And then we set it to a frequency of randomly chosen 5,000 hertz. Um, as usual, we, s we start it at full volume at time t, and, oh, it's called gain. And then it drops in volume to zero at time t as well. It's fairly short, so 0 0.02 is going to be a very short sound. Then we need to connect everything together. So source, connect, gain, connect, ice pass filter, connect, this dot sync. And then we need to start it and then stop it. Oh, no. No, it will stop whenever, whenever it reaches the end of the buffer automatically. OK, so does that sound all right? I don't know. Ah, that sounds, sounds decent, yeah. So that's a little symbol, little maracas. OK. OK, cool. Ah, oh, OK, we go on. Now we need, we need a clap sound. OK, so clap is just playing back the buffer, so... Yeah, we do like var source equals this AC, create buffer source, exactly like before. And then uh, we actually don't want it full volume. We want, we want a, bit, a bit not very loud. Uh, so we will create a gain node for that as well. You always have a ton of gain nodes when you do web audio API, like a ton. Create gain, OK. And then we connect the source to the gain. Oops, no, connect to the gain, and then connect the gain to the sync. OK? And then we need to source dot buffer equals the clap. The clap is something we just got using this fetch uh, thing here. Um, and it's the sound of a clap. And then we start it. Same thing is going to be stop. Um, it's going to stop automatically. So, does it sound all right? Yeah. OK. OK, cool. Yeah, sounds good. OK. And now we need, as it is written in the string sheet here, we need to drop the bass. OK, so let's do this. Um, as we saw, two sawtooths together, slightly detuned, sound good. So we're going to give it a go. So we need to create two oscillators. And then we create a gain node. Always create a gain node. Gain. OK. And then we'll need a filter, because filters are cool. Create by quad. OK. So. We connect all this little world together. Ask two. OK. Then what can we do? We need, so as you can see here, we got the, the actual notes we need to play uh, passed to us by the scheduler. Isn't it nice? So we need to set the frequency of the notes. OK, so uh, oscillator dot frequency dot set value at time. Um, and then we've got a little helper at the top. So from a note to a frequency, it's this barbaric formula that you can find on Wikipedia. Um, so not to frec note t. And then same So for the first and the second one. Then we detune one oscillator like we saw in the slide before, and then set the two to uh, sawtooth. So 
Bluetooth. Because like in the original 303, you could choose between Sawtooth and Square, but I think I prefer the Sawtooth sound, so let's, yeah, let's go with it. And then give it a little envelope so it doesn't sound boring. Um, gain, gain, set target, ah, oops. Mm -mm -mm. Fairly short, as short as the kick, because the kick was also 0 0.1 in the constant. Then we will uh, set some value on the filter. Uh, so a fairly aggressive resonance. And then we will automate the filter as well. So the filter cutoff frequency will change over the course of the note. So the sound will not get very, that will not be boring. Because boring sound, you, you just want to like shut it off and really don't want to listen to it. Um, so let's start at 300. Again, just picking the value randomly. Um, yeah. And going up to 3,000. Fairly short again. Then the filter will let the bass uh, through and will cut off the high frequency, right? So for that, we'll use a low pass because it lets, lets the low pass. And then we start all that jazz. Start T. Stop at somewhere in the future, T plus one. Okay, is that gonna work? I don't know. I think it's, yeah, looks, looks all right. Okay. No. Oh, yeah. Good. I had forgotten to connect it to the actual destination. <laughs> it was not going to work. Okay. Right, let me get this one back. Okay. try to make it a little more interesting and uh, can, I don't know, have like 10 minutes, okay. <laughs> um, what we can do is to dynamically change the value of the filter and uh, so let's try that. So we'll put a variable here, prick equals and then we'll drop a slider. So slider equals document dot create uh, element input input. These days with HTML5, you can do really crazy stuff. Input type range. Input min. I don't know, thousand maybe. And max to ten thousand. Input step. Mm, one. Um, then input on input. I'm gonna go up, up. Okay, so we're gonna set frec equals a dot target dot value, and so that we will it will change the the frequency of the filter. Of course, I need to. Do document up in child. Oops. Input. No, slider. It's called. Oh, it's called. Yeah, go. Okay. Is it working? Have I. So, what? Ah, yeah. Good one. Okay. Is that dropping a slider?
thing is starting to, to work. Do I want to do, I don't know, something else? Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty much done. Um, although we can take questions or, yep. Wow, thank you, Paul. <laughs> Big round of applause to him. So this is how we learn how to make sounds and uh, music eventually. I would love to have some questions. Hi, that's awesome. Um, I got a real aid away. Um, I got one question about the, the way you're constructing the sounds. Yep. Every time you trigger a sound, you're, you're constructing the whole thing. Is there a reason you're doing that as opposed to making it once and then doing a start and stop each time? So I've got two answers for you. The first answer would be, uh, Yes, you could create your node once and stick a gain node in front of it and mute it. Um, the second answer is you cannot restart a node. Once it started and stopped, you, it got garbage collected, right? So it's kind of a, like a fire and forget kind of model. The nodes are extremely cheap to create and are extremely cheap to destroy. So that's, it simplifies uh, the model. So you don't have to keep track of how many voices you have and things like that. Um, so yeah, two models. Either you create all the nodes uh, in at uh, each time, like I'm doing here, because it's a bit more simple. Uh, the second, yeah, you you can just uh, stick a gain node, and sticking a gain node in front of it is much more like the old analog analog way of doing things. So when you have a voltage controlled amplifier, as it's called VCA. So yeah, two ways of doing things. I picked one for this talk, really. <laughs> Hello. Um, what is between this and doing something like the Serato software in a browser? Hard work and tears. OK. <laughs> um, so Serato, for the people who know, uh, who don't know about it, is a thing where you put like kind of fake vinyls. And, and you can play MP3s. And the vinyl, yeah, you know the orientation, the speed of the vinyl? on your turntable, so you can actually scratch with your MP3s, right? So that's the idea about it. So no, it's like, I think it's pretty much possible. Uh, people have done turntable uh, applications on the web before. So yeah, if, we hit, if you hit me, hit, hit me up afterwards, I can give you some hints. It's, yeah, it's kind of working pretty nicely. But yeah, I mean, it's just work. You need to, you need to do it, basically. Um, I'm making sense. Maybe you can make the next Serato on the web. So. Hi. Um, the tool that you visualize the frequency, I think it, it looks really useful to me. Like, I, think that that's a, I've, I knew that there's a Q value that you can play to, to adjust the sound, but like, I could not understand. And, and I never knew like, what that means. So um, how, how, how do you draw that red line and you know, the shape of the, the so, frequency? In the Web Audio API, uh, there is this node that I have not presented, but that exists. Um, that is called the analyzer node. So the analyzer node, you, you, connect the analyze, you connect other nodes to the analyzer node, and it gives you either a time domain or frequency domain representation of, uh, of the data that in input. And then it gives you a buffer, and then you, I, I'm just basically drawing the buffer on the canvas, right? repeatedly using request animation frame. So this one way of doing things. For the filter, uh, for the filter, there is a method on the bicot filter that can give you what is called the frequency response of the filter, and then it, you give it a number of frequency where you you want the the information, and it gives you back a buffer that says, oh, I'm cutting at this frequency and I'm boosting at this frequency and uh, things like that. So, but the code is going to be online. Um, I have a last slide to show with a number of URLs, uh, if possible. OK, so thanks, for starters. And, uh, and uh, all the code I've, I've presented today, um, I've made a liter uh, literate JavaScript program that explains you in depth how it works and possible uh, ways of making it better. Uh, if you want to know more about synthesis and how to uh, emulate old analog gear, you just search synth secrets on Google, and uh, it give you like a 60-something uh, article series. So yeah, of course, Twitter, GitHub, had not, and email if you want, if you need anything from me. But uh, yeah, so this is like a 
literate JavaScript programs, so JavaScript on the right and prose on the left that explains everything that it's doing. So yeah, that's, yeah. So it's exactly the program that I wrote. So, uh, I mean, exactly not, because like it was improv, but like it does kind of the same sound, it's the same technique, it's the same instruments. But yeah, so yeah, feel free to, to, read, to, read, to read up on that, uh, because I'm not sure about you, but I find it pretty fun. <laughs> Right. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs>